Hi there guys and welcome back to Sitrep Gaming. In today's video I'd like to discuss whether or not Call of Duty developers are beginning to push the PS4 and the Xbox One beyond what we can reasonably expect each of these consoles to produce with each year's new Call of Duty title. So if this is a topic you're interested in hearing more about then please leave a like rating on this video. Now the gameplay that you're seeing is from Call of Duty Black Ops 3, it's a TDM on the map Havoc and I end up pulling out the FFAR, a weapon which I was fortunate enough to get in the supply drop, do some really really good work with the weapon and pull out another win for the team in a very close game. So I hope you enjoy the gameplay. But anyway, let's get straight into the topic of conversation for today's video. So. Are Call of Duty developers beginning to push the current generation of consoles that we have beyond what we can reasonably expect of them? Now before we get too in-depth into the current state of affairs, I just want to backtrack slightly so we can get a feel for how the developers handled the last transition between consoles, which of course is between the Xbox 360 and PS3, over to the Xbox One and the PS4. Now the game which really for me began to highlight the issues with the old generation of consoles was Call of Duty Black Ops 2, which of course was the last game to appear exclusively on the Xbox 360 and PS3. And it became pretty apparent with this game that all the technologies which had been developed during the life cycle of the Xbox 360 and which were being implemented into Call of Duty titles were beginning to push the console beyond what could reasonably be expected of it. The new lighting mechanics, things to do with movement, with the weapon mechanics, the netcode, the connection issues, the host migrations we were all experiencing in Call of Duty Black Ops 2. A lot of those problems were rooted in the fact that simply the Xbox 360, which back then was the predominant console with which to experience Call of Duty Black Ops 2 on, it was being pushed beyond what we could all reasonably expect of it and it suffered essentially the gameplay for Black Ops 2 whilst being very good and whilst it's a game which a lot of people remember very fondly it was apparent that it was pushing the consoles to their limit. Now of course the good news was that Call of Duty Ghosts, the next title, was going to be available on the next generation of consoles. We'd had the introduction of the PS4, we'd had the introduction of the Xbox One and the next Call of Duty title was going to be taking advantage of that. Or so we thought. And the reason I say that is that, yes, Call of Duty Ghosts was on the next generation of consoles, but because so few people had actually moved on to the next generation by that time, Infinity Ward, the development team behind Call of Duty Ghosts, were forced probably to put most of their efforts into developing the game for what was still the current generation of consoles. And because of that, a lot of the potential of the PS4 and Xbox One went untapped during that game. It, it simply wasn't realised to the same degree that we see nowadays. Now, of course, as we move on to Advanced Warfare, we do see a lot of that potential starting to be realised. It became pretty apparent that Sledgehammer Games, the development team behind Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, were viewing the PS4 as the primary game system with which they thought Call of Duty should be played on, and they were beginning to maximise the potential that the PS4 offered with their development of the game, and that the current generation of consoles, the Xbox 360 and the PS3, they were now beginning to become the old generation. People were moving over to the next gen, and simply put, Advanced Warfare was making really good strides in taking advantage of everything the console had to offer. Now, when we move to Black Ops 3, I think this is when we see the first real next generation Call of Duty game. This is the game which turned around and said, I'm sorry but if you're on Xbox 360 or PS3, then really we're forgetting about you. We're outsourcing the port to the old gen games uh, to a different design studio and we're focusing exclusively on the PS4 and the Xbox One. Of course PS4 being the predominant system with which to play it on. So what we saw with Call of Duty Black Ops 3 was a game that utilised every single aspect of the PS4 that it could do. It pushed it to its absolute limits and it tried to squeeze every last ounce of what made it a next generation console out of it to be applied to the production of Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Now this was great. At launch, Black Ops 3 really was absolutely fantastic. The game played so well, and as I've said, it became apparent that Treyarch had made every effort to fully realise the potential of the PS4, and the game certainly reflected that. Now it's at this point 
that I'd like to stop that kind of timeline of, of events over the last six or seven years and start to focus on where we see the current generation of consoles buckling. And of course, I am talking predominantly about the PS4. Now, as I've said, Black Ops 3 functioned fine at launch. There was absolutely nothing wrong with it. And for the first few months, it continued to function to a very high standard. The problem, however, came as we got significantly far into the DLC season. And the point I'd like to pinpoint in particular was the arrival of DLC 3. Now, obviously DLC predominantly caters for the map packs, and whilst not everyone buys them, a significant number of people do buy them. But of course, throughout the DLC season, it's not just the actual packs containing the maps which we see. We see a constant stream of new content being added to the game. We see new weapons, we see new camos, we see new customization types, uh, we see new game types. Obviously, we had the introduction of Fracture in Call of Duty Black Ops 3. And it was with the introduction of all these new elements that by the time we arrived at around about DLC 3, the quality of the game felt like it was starting to buckle. It was starting to go downhill a lot. And I know a lot of people share these sentiments because a lot of people were reporting the same things. Things such as quite considerable lag, which appeared to be on host side, not server side. There was considerable frame drops, which was incredibly frustrating. And simply put, whilst the base version of Call of Duty Black Ops 3 functioned fine, it seemed that all this additional content which was being hammered into the game was severely deteriorate, sorry, deteriorating the infrastructure with which the game was being played. And it was with this realisation that I started to think, is the PS4 being pushed beyond what we can reasonably expect of it? Bearing in mind that what we reasonably expect nowadays isn't just a game at launch, it's a game which lasts for a year with lots of new content. Now the concern I have is that we move into the last phases of Infinite Warfare's DLC season. Are we going to see the same problems that we saw with Call of Duty Black Ops 3? Now thus far, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare has actually dealt very, very well with the additional content. I haven't noticed anything such as severe frame drops. Yes, I know that the connection issues aren't great, but there doesn't seem to be any deterioration which is related to the addition of new content. However, we are about to hit DLC 3, and with the introduction of this, it was about the same time that we saw Black Ops 3 going downhill, so I'm waiting on tender hooks to see how Infinite Warfare handles it, because if Infinite Warfare goes downhill, then it seems pretty apparent to me that the current generation of consoles we have, the PS4 and the Xbox One, aren't equipped to deal with the introduction of a new Call of Duty game and the subsequent year of entirely new content which is being pumped into that game. Now Call of Duty World War 2 is around the corner and obviously we expect that it's going to have the same format. So again, the concern is there that if we see the issues in Infinite Warfare that we had in Black Ops 3, then it's more than likely that we'll see them again in Call of Duty World War 2. And all of these things point towards the fact that are we ready to move on now? Because effectively, Call of Duty World War 2 will be the sixth title that we've had on the PS4 and the Xbox One, so over half a decade now. Now yes, we have the PS4 Pro and yes, we have the Xbox One X to be released, but these consoles, they're not new consoles, they're simply upgrades of the existing consoles effectively, and it seems like all they're directed at really is graphical improvements. Now I think whilst graphical improvements are lovely, the issues which caused Black Ops 3 to fall apart as the DLC season went along will most likely be based more in programming and infrastructure. So that is where we need to see real improvements and that is where we need to see consoles being able to uh, devote resources to. So if we don't get that with the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X, then I'm a little bit concerned about the immediate future of Call of Duty and how the game unfolds each year. Now, of course, we've only just learnt about the Xbox One X, so it's unlikely that we're going to be seeing a new console from Microsoft beyond this as in an entirely new console that isn't just an upgrade of the Xbox One for a good few years. So it looks like we're, we're going to be staying on the current generation of consoles for, I'd say, at least another two years. So to see how this is going to unfold, to see how the games handle 
being still, you know, implementing the infrastructure which the PS4 primarily allows them to have is, whilst initially concerning to me, it's going to be really, really interesting. But my instinct tells me that we've we've pushed the consoles as far as they can be pushed in the last half decade. And that the time very soon is going to come when, if we want to realise a truly next generation experience of Call of Duty, we're going to have to move on to a new console. And Sony and Microsoft are going to have to do something which is going to allow developers to really realise the visions that they have for these games. So anyway, that's going to wrap it up for today's video. I hope that you've enjoyed it, and if you have, please leave a like rating, it's greatly appreciated. If you'd like to see more content from City Rep Gaming, then make sure that you subscribe to the channel, and make sure to turn on the notifications as well so that you never miss another video. All that's left to say is thanks for tuning into City Rep Gaming, and I'll see you in the next video.